A big company marches onto your land, sinks a well without your permission, then proceeds to threaten your livelihood. The drilling sites are springing up like Topsy all over their farms, some with significant gas leakage. And that Australia's greatest underground water resource, the Great Artesian Basin, will be contaminated and depleted. And it's our laws and our politicians who are letting it happen. This is shaping into a classic battle of David and Goliath. We have a local situation, we've got a state situation, we've got a national situation on a spring-fed continent, and we have a global situation. The monster in the room is the coal seam gas. It is a blueprint for the destruction of sweet water across the planet. Critics claim illnesses, including cancers and neurological disorders, are a result of the gas extraction process. In what's called fracking, a concoction of chemicals and sand are hydraulically rammed into the well to fracture the coal seam and release the gas. The chemicals used are a closely guarded secret by mining industry officials. Do you know what's put down into those yes. wells? Do you know what chemicals are used? Um, not, uh, not uh, totally, no. Shouldn't you? Um. Shouldn't you know what chemicals they hydraulically ram down those wells? Well, what I'm assured about is that the processes that they employ are appropriate processes for the extraction of, of that coal seam gas. These chemicals are carcinogens, they're reproductive toxins, they're chemicals that cause sensitisation. Of the 23 most commonly used chemicals by fracking companies, only two had ever been assessed by our national regulator. Yet here we were seeing these chemicals released into the wider environment in vast mixtures. Since mining began nearby, the bore is spewing more gas than water. And just to prove it, when you light it, it does this. My place is unlivable. I mean, I've been gone now for about six days. My headache that I've had for five weeks is gone. I've got 200 wells in my neighbourhood. We've got about 2,000 in my direct district, but we've got 4,500 in total and 36,000 more to come. And the approval is given to wait for it to 2060. The federal government has signed the death warrant on the Great Artesian Basin by allowing these people to go in there. Doesn't that mining fracture the water table? That's one of the allegations that is made. Is that not true? Well, no. no. That's one of the allegations that is made. That is why we've put in place the Independent Queensland Water Commission. See, these are vital things to know before any of this should be taking place. And you don't know. No. When you disrupt the pressure between aquifers, the leaching between aquifers is an unknowable quantity. And if we break all that strata open, all that gas is going to start leaking all over, even if it's nothing to do with their hydraulic fluids or their chemical fluids. Once you fracture it, the whole sandstone region is going to start leaking again until it stabilises some millions of years down the track. The trouble is we're dependent on those groundwaters now and all the groundwaters go into the surface waters um, at the springs and into the dam so it's effectively all the one water and um, if we disturb it we can expect millions of years of upset until it actually stabilises again. So when you start going under the ground and fracturing aquifers with multiple fracking processes, you are destroying the future for generations, and that's all living things. That's no understatement. All these things add up to a disaster, and probably the greatest threat that Australia has ever faced, the assault on our water supply, our sweet potable water supply. Certainly if we get thousands of wells across the district, we almost certainly will lose the groundwater. For Australia, that is just absolutely crucial. Um, and yeah, if it becomes a gas field, we won't get rid of it. We've got to stop it before it becomes a gas field. I can't believe the human race is like just so money and orientated and, you know, can put water at risk rather than, and human health, just for the sake of more money, more money. And it seems to be the pe big people in power that are just taking everything and just leaving the rest of us with nothing. 
Queensland Gas Company, which is actually hiding under the banner of British Gas, have signed a $100 billion deal with China over a 30-year period. Uh, they want this gas out of the ground, they want it out, and on the boats to China and India by 2014. And every day they're late, there's huge penalties for the, for the industry and for the companies. So they're pushing through at any cost, you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't matter about your land rights, land access. You know, their attitude is, you're in our gas field, get out of the way. You're never going to get them to understand things when their salary depends on them not understanding it, you know? And to, to say that it's anything other than making money is insane. Chloe Munro, who's the Chief Advisor to the National Water Commission, spoke in terms of millennia for this damage to be fixed up. So this is the Chief Advisor to the National Government and her advice was simply flipped away. So if people of that calibre are ignored, then we have to understand that it becomes not essentially a political issue, but a people's issue. We have to take responsibility for our own water and our own food production. We have the right to participate meaningfully in any decision about chemicals that affect us. Well, obviously, the incredible expansion of coal seam gas, the use of the chemicals, has just denied us that right. And I think it's about time that the Australian population turned around and said, hey, we will not tolerate it. We want that right, and we want it now. There are all sorts of levels of water toxicity down below us. The longer water spends in a coal seam, the more toxicity it picks up and holds in it. It is then put in so-called settling or evaporation ponds. And the plan is to line those with builder's plastic. I got that from Gasco's chief operating officer. I said, I'm a builder. Builder's plastic, eh? And we have already taken photos of builder's plastic with wallaby holes in it and where it's fallen down and the water from test bores has washed down into wetlands around Casino. My suggestion for this region is no more wells. Don't let them drill any more wells. Pull it up now. Once you see the, the, the degradation of the land, it's shocking. It really, really shocks you. You don't want to let these people get their foot in the door. The minute you let them get their foot in the door, it's over. They will build that pipeline from here straight through to Gladstone, be going to China and India before you know it, and it'll be you who pay the, the ultimate price. Who wants a pipeline running through your farm? What's that going to do to land values? The bank won't loan money on property that's got any mining concerns or any areas of land that are under investigation. People can't get a mortgage, they can't live on the land that they've got. What happens is with coal seam gas, it comes up with other constituent gases. Now, they'll vent them into the air. Some of them will flare them. Most of the time it is vented into the air, as you saw on the film. So uh, with the valleys and the moist air, the moisture catches onto the gas and it'll settle it. So it'll settle in all your valleys. It'll settle on your homes, it'll settle on your cattle, it'll settle on your children, your family, your neighbours, you know what I mean? In my opinion, if it gets going here, you're in more trouble than I am. We've got many groups writing to the government, writing to the, to the Premier. We have groups that are having regular meetings with the Premier. It's not stopping the drilling. They tie you up. They'll put you on a committee. They will get you and they will tie you up in, bog you down in paperwork, meetings. It'll go on and on and on and on and on. Then you'll get to a point. They'll have 400 wells drilled. It's too late then. You know what I mean? They will bog you down. There should not be one more well drilled in this district. And that's the line you have to take. The people that drilled the hole up in Kieron are Arrow, Shell, Oil, Petro, China. So when you see Arrow, and they'll put a nice little ad in the local community newspaper saying, Arrow for brighter futures for community groups. That means they're coming. Make no mistake, this is not the fight of our lives, this is the fight for our lives. And show the state and federal governments that you've had enough. If you get, continue this on, you're in serious trouble.
You really are. The, the, the wells that you have now, that's it. You no more. You've got to take that stand. Otherwise, you'll get in my situation and my land's unsellable, it's unlivable, it's over for us, but it's not over for you. Talk with your neighbours, talk with your friends, make it happen. Do not let these companies in. Badger your state government, badger your federal government, harass the companies. And they'll tie you up as long as they can, drill as many wells as they can, and they'll pay the landowners. In our area, they pay between $200 and $1,500 a well, and they're making a million dollars a well. There's a guy, and we're, we're picketing on his land right now, he's lost about a quarter of his land, $1,500 a year. He's not allowed to even use the road, you know what I mean? They've put the road through, but he's not allowed to use it. It's ridiculous. We're second over money. Pressure your local mayors, your local members, you know what I mean? And the independents, don't forget these independents, these federal independents. Raw boat shots now, anti-CSG, pressure these guys to, to make a stand. Get educated about what is coming and then get active. If there's an action called, be at the action because it's bodies on the ground in these places when they're called for that is going to make the difference and actually show these people they can't just walk in here and wreck the water. I'm not an activist. I'm not a greenie. I'm a mother. I have four beautiful daughters that I have spent 30 plus years raising to be good human beings. I haven't invested all that love for this to happen. I want them to have a future. I want their children to have a future and I want their grandchildren to have a future. We want clean water. We want clean water. One thing you can do is walk out of here tonight and tell someone. You, you need to grow this movement and you need to grow it fast. Join Lock the Gate. I'm from the Lock the Gate Alliance and that encompasses 70 groups and we're getting a national movement happening but join your local group, go to your meetings, go to your protests and, and organise protests, organise blockades, you know what I mean? Don't let these people in the neighbourhood go to their office. Don't wait for them to come to you and say, hey, we're going to put a gas field through here. You go to them and you tell them, we are not going to live in a gas field. We are not going to have compressor stations in our neighbourhood. You've got to stand up, you've got to be brave, non-violent, civil disobedience. It's the only way to do it. We've been through this and look at where we are now. We have no option. We have no choice. We've got to get the total ban on coal seam gas mining in this country.